Uh, we want to give glory to God. The Bible admonishes us to tell and to speak of the greatness of God. And we want to do that this morning. And I want to do that, uh, and I've, I've actually only prepared one person in advance for this, but, uh, but I'm going to ask several people that, uh, that have just in recent months been healed to, uh, to come and to, uh, and to just tell us a little bit about their healing, and I'll kind of help you through it. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But before we do that, I want to ask uh, two of my grandkids to come up here. Boys, Jonah, Caleb, would you guys come up here? I better have them stand up here so you can see them. So, uh, <clears throat> some of you were here a few weeks ago. Oh, caught them with their mouth full. That's why they're so quiet. They found some candy. Uh, you know, uh, but just because... Come over this way, boys. People on this side can't see. There we go. Jonah, you better come right in front. We really can't see you. But do you, do you know, just because uh, births happen around us all the time, uh, we just sort of ignore and don't pay much attention to it. But do you know that every child is a miracle and a blessing from God? And, uh, and, of course, the Bible says that uh, it's especially important to grandfathers. And uh, so, see? <laughs> Blessed is he who has a quiver full, the Bible says. Okay. But uh, I also wanted to give glory to God one more time because something extraordinary happened with our, with our grandson, Caleb. His mother, Heather, is right back here. And here she is trying to tell Jonah to behave. It's okay, all right? We love having... Don't you love having some kids around here? Yeah. One of the ladies that had kids last week, she got so worried about them that they left and went home. Don't do that, okay? I can talk over kids. I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, we have a bunch of children here, some girls who've never been to church before, and we are glad that you're here. Yes. Mommy, if they make some noise, don't worry about it, okay? But... Uh, our son, uh, our son and his wife weren't able to have kids a number of years ago, and they said, would you guys come and pray for us? And we were living in Colorado at the time. And we came down and met in my folks' living room near Country Club and University in Mesa, where uh, her parents have lived for a long time, my wife's folks have. And uh, we laid hands on and prayed for them. And within a week, she was expecting. And nine months later, he wasn't this size then. Okay? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> he was 10 pounds. He was a big kid. <laughs> but Len actually was able to get on a plane, fly down from Colorado, and help with the delivery at the hospital over in Phoenix. And how old are you now, Caleb? 10. 10. In case you didn't hear it, 10. So 11 years ago, God did a miracle, and here is what you All right, thank you very much for that. Next, I want to ask Joyce. I've, I've mentioned this a couple times. Come on, Joyce. See, she kind of goes, oh! But... <laughs> This is really important because we have to tell of the greatness of God. I met, uh, I met Joyce a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, and the first time she came over to Bible study at the windmill in Florence, she was pushing a walker. She was. And she asked us to pray for her. And some of us did. We did what the Bible says. We laid hands on and prayed for her in the name of the Lord. Uh, you, a lot of people, a lot of you have heard there's power in prayer. I'm here to tell you there is no power in prayer. Okay. Now I'm being a little bit technical and I'm not being facetious but it's important we understand there is no power in prayer there is power in God creator of heaven and earth Amen. prayer is the vehicle by which we reach out to him and tap into his resources so the, the next Bible study she came to Joyce was walking with Cain and then uh, for a couple weeks she was doing that and then tell us what happened on that uh, Tuesday night Oh. Uh, we, we, there were several women that needed prayer and we really had a word from God that the husbands needed to pray for their wives and, and Jack's over here Jack I'm not going to put you on the spot but, but tell about what happened that night well um, I was just standing there that actually the Lord had touched me the first time I prayed for me only I didn't know it I didn't feel anything but I kept forgetting to get in my wheelchair <laughs> you know, when you want to run and do something, I got up and ran and did it. And it dawned on me, wait a minute, I forgot my chair. <laughs> and so when I thought, okay, well, we'll go along with this. And, 
And we went back and he prayed for me, or the group prayed for me and my husband. And while they were praying for me, I got this hot sensation on the middle of my back. And I had broken my back when I was about 35. And uh, it, it, it was so, so startling that I turned around to see if there was anybody there, and there wasn't anybody there. And I looked over at Pastor, and he had his hand on my back right where I had broken it. And the heat from when the Lord touched me stayed in my back for a day and a half. And it, it dawned on me that there was something in my back that the Lord had healed. All I knew was I couldn't walk. The doctor said I had bursitis and that I had arthritis and all this stuff. Plus, I'm a diabetic, so they threw in neuropathy. But I, mean, I don't know what God healed, but I can walk. Amen. And, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> these stairs. I hadn't been able to go up these stairs for a couple of years. And I had to sing one morning and and I got as far as the bottom of the stairs and I knew he wasn't with me. And I thought, oh God, am I going to be able to make it up the stairs? And I was more worried about getting up the stairs than singing the song. <laughs> but it's been wonderful. Isn't God amazing? Oh. Amen. Amen. One of the distortions about healing, and there's a lot of baloney out there, and a lot of it's on television about healing, that is not biblical, it is not glorifying to God. But I want you to understand that healing, God has given to His body. He occasionally gives someone a gift of healing. I've experienced it a few times. That night, Jack was praying the most beautiful prayer, and, and, and those of you who know Jack, he would rather not say a word. You can't miss him. He fills up the doorway, but he would just soon not speak. But he was praying for his wife, and uh, we had several groups praying, and I just happened to walk over, and I felt like the Lord said, put your hand in the middle of her back, and so I did. Now, uh, I made a couple of jokes about, you know, you all need to be touched by my left hand, but, but you need to understand this. And, and it's hilarious to me how God drives home the points about this is the work of God. This is by God's hand. It's not by man's. That night, I was already starting to fight a cold. I went home sicker than a dog and was home and missed two days of work being sick. <laughs> now, I didn't feel a thing when I was praying for her, but God touched her in the middle of her back. So, folks, it's not us. It's God being God and us learning how to tap into the resources. And I want to repeat that I believe one of the biggest uh, proofs there is no God that atheists have is the way Christian people act and that God doesn't do anything. We just got to show up on Sunday and give Him a tip and hope that maybe at the end things will work out. But let me tell you, we're here experiencing the power of God. I wanted you to hear about that. But I don't want to stop there. Joey, come over here. And I haven't warned these people, so I just, I'm just i putting them on the spot, but I know... Look at you. Look at you walking. <laughs> Need to know the story. So, uh, and, and by the way, this is Joyce's uh, Joyce's granddaughter. And um, jo you had a you had a, a stroke at birth. At birth, okay. And um, and so tell us what what your problem has been. I have a weakness on my whole right side. I don't use my right side at all. Um, I used to walk with my foot and my knee outward, but for I've been going to a Bible study and coming to church and being prayed for, and I have been blessed and touched by God that I have been running, walking, so straight, and I have strength in my right side that I have never felt before. The first time that we had prayed for her, uh, she came back and said, uh, I felt this Heat, is that right? Down your right leg? No, oh, your whole right side? Whole right side. For like, for how long? For like the last three weeks. Like, what's still going on? All right. <laughs> but she comes on Wednesday and she says, look, I can wiggle my toes. And I thought, well, isn't that great, you know, that she's yeah. getting better, she can wiggle her toes. And I'm thinking, you know, it's been 
you know, six months. And, and I said to Jody, so, so how long has it been since, since you were able to wheel your toes? And she looks at me and goes, 26 years! <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Isn't God amazing? Yes. This week they were over at the, uh, one of the big department stores and uh, Joyce had forgotten something and, and Jody said, I'll get it. And Joyce was so excited, she shared with us, she looked, and here's her granddaughter running in the store, and in 26 years, she's never seen her granddaughter be able to run. But isn't got a foot? With a straight foot. Yeah. Yeah. So, break, get up here. Look at there. She can stand with her feet straight. She can stand with her feet straight. She can move her arms. She's got power and strength. And isn't God awesome? Isn't God amazing? God is amazing. Oh, bracelet fell apart. She can even run back over and pick up, pick up the bracelet. Um, I, some of our physical problems are a little bit personal. We don't like to talk about. So I, I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to, you know, embarrass anybody or anything. But I, I want to ask Paula. Paula, would you mind? I, I'll come back to where Paula is, okay? All right. This is her first time to come to church here. Paula, I understand you were raised Catholic, is that right? And she's been coming to our Tuesday night Bible study over at the windmill for about a year or so, right? Over a year. Okay. Well, Matt was having a physical ailment, and I'm not going to describe it, but, you know, we all have these problems. And, you know, God's not, you know, God knows what's going on. So, uh... Harold, really, you can tell it best. Would you mind? You can stay right there and just uh, tell what you can tell about it, all right? Well, Mac um, came to... Mac, Mac is... I, I'll tell this part of Mac's story. Mac's 84 years old. And, uh, this week? This week. This week. This week. Oh, Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> Mac is, uh, is the first one to come to work at the windmill in the morning, the last one to leave at night. He was a former Navy diver. Right as they come, this is one of those people that you really enjoy being around because he can do most anything and volunteers to do a lot of things that he probably shouldn't be doing, but uh, it, it's always most appreciated. So we, we noticed one day he was just in an awful lot of pain, and uh, he, he, he never will admit that there's anything wrong and so forth. So um, we said, gosh, you, you really need to, you need to go home. And uh, rest, and uh, you know, see what uh, what what is really going on with your whole system. And um, so he went home. Paula had been experiencing the things that, that Rick is describing here this morning, uh, and some of the healings that had, had been going on. And so Paula said, "Gosh, I I, I want to anoint you." And uh, so. She says, I've never done this before. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I could do this. And as Rick has explained it through the last several months, all of us have the capacity to do that. Uh, nobody's ever told us that we could. So Paula has experienced that. So she said, what do I do? And, and he said, well, you do it with oil. And she said, well, what kind of oil? And uh, he said, this, this is one of them in the kitchen. So she went in the kitchen, got a quart bottle of uh, olive oil. And she said, do I put it in the tub? And then you can, no, no, you just smack my head with it. And so she did. And she prayed for him as that, uh, as that went on. And you had an appointment already scheduled with the doctor for the next day to take care of, uh, or attempt to take care of the issues that were going, that were going on with it. And he gets there, the doctor claimed that there was, that they were falsifying uh, this illness because there was absolutely no sign of what had happened. So it was just a, another amazing thing that God does in our lives. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, you were, you were kind, you said the doctor, did he... Kind of inferred that I, he didn't say I was lying, but he kind of inferred it, you know, like I was embellishing the problem. And he had a terrible, terrible problem. I mean, I don't want to get into specifics, but he couldn't sit down even, he couldn't sleep, crying. He never shows people. He was crying from the pain. And then the next day, after I prayed over him and anointed him, he was 
the doctor just looked at me. I was so amazed. It's just everything just disappeared. It was just he looked. He he inferred. He came out safe. He inferred that I was lying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Totally healed. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? If there are any others of you here who were raised Catholic, I just want to tell you that in Jesus' name, you have the power to pray and ask God to heal people. God gave that power to His body. A lot of people merchandise that. That's why I wanted to tell you, you don't need to be touched by my left hand. You need to be touched by Jesus. And it might be through a friend. And it might be somebody who doesn't have a lot of biblical knowledge. You don't have to be some super giant. Because Jesus taught 70 baby disciples to go out to tell people they need to repent and turn to God, and they prayed for the sick, and sick people got well. And folks, Jesus has not quit doing what He was doing in the book of Acts. It's the churches that have quit doing their part. Amen. And so, praise the Lord for that. Dorothy, come here. <laughs> She's like, oh no. <laughs> one more. Uh, and, and, then, and then the one that I had asked to share about his healing experience then will come up and share with us, but... <laughs> I love telling the story about Dorothy. <clears throat> so, um, I, as I understand it, a year ago, the doctors were telling you you had a partial plug on your carotid artery? Yes, 59%. A year ago? Yes. Okay. And were you having some physical problems here recently, uh, some pain or something? And or? I wasn't breathing very well. Okay. And I was prayed for on that Wednesday night. Joyce had her arms on my shoulders, and I just felt my neck getting hot. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'm going to tell the rest of it. Go ahead. <laughs> so while, nobody's hand was on your neck, but while we're praying, God starts touching you and your neck gets hot. I said, my neck is hot, warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, everybody, well, uh, anyway, I went, that was Wednesday, and the mm -hmm. following Tuesday, I went to the doctor, and I had all the tests done. And the next morning, the doctor calls, and he says, there's nothing there. It's normal. It's Heal. Totally heal. How about that? It's either that or I bumped something here. But, but, but what's that? I said there's something else. Oh. When I was walking with um, Doing the lapel, right? with Ken and um, Matt, my Madeline's daughter. Madeline. Her, her little dog. Anyway, oh, okay. We were walking, okay? And when was this? This was just on Thursday. Okay, on Thursday. Yeah. All right. And anyway, I get out of breath going up and down the hill to school. I didn't get out of breath on Thursday. <laughs> to Glenn's house, just to walk up or drive there, I have to sit down for about five minutes and, you know. And you don't have to do that anymore. God, I haven't gone back. up her driveway yet. <laughs> oh, okay. There's the job for this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Go to this driveway and walk up the driveway. The other thing I have to tell you is that this was on a Wednesday night here just about, uh, about two, two and a half weeks ago. And, uh, and she mentioned that she was having trouble and having this pain and, and, uh, and shortness of breath. And, and uh, the Lord touched Joyce. And while I was teaching, she just went over and laid hands on her and started praying for her. And, and then Kathleen came, laid her hands on her, and I did too. Nobody was touching her neck. But here we are praying and asking God to heal her, and she was so rude. In the middle, in the middle of while we're praying, she starts, and she said it loud. Not, not like she just did now, you know, my neck's getting hot. She went, my neck's getting hot, my neck's getting hot. <laughs> Woman, be quiet. Don't you know we're talking to God? <laughs> I'm telling you, God has such a sense of humor in doing these things, and it just sounds amazing. Praise the Lord, God. Praise the Lord. Isn't God awesome? Isn't God awesome? Praise the Lord. Did you see if I messed this up? You should. Okay. I got my other one that I can use, and we got one up here, too. Well, listen, there are a number of other stories that we could tell. Um, and let me just ask a show of hands whether it was some kind of a pain or a fever or something else, if over the last few months God has touched you and healed you, would you just lift your hand and just hold it up high? Look around. Number of other people. Okay. And praise God for those of you that didn't raise your hand that you didn't need to be here. But we're here to tell you that God's in the business of taking care of people. I want to ask my friend Jesse to come up. And, uh, 
it's, it's actually my blessing that, uh, that I got to meet Harold and Katie because of Jesse. I was uh, teaching a Bible study, and I was, I was teaching a study about healing at the Union Baptist Church over in Florence. And uh, Jesse can tell the, the rest of the story, but um, the VA had told Jesse that he had about two months to live because he had a very aggressive tumor uh, behind his right eye. And uh, Harold heard that I was teaching about healing, and so Brother Harold brought Jesse, come on up here, everybody, brought Jesse to our little meeting that we're having that the world would pay no attention to, you know, probably about 10 people or 12 people there, but we're studying what the Bible says about healing. And, uh, and that night, Jesse gave his heart to the Lord. He turned to the Lord, and we laid hands on him, prayed for him, and asked God to heal him. And uh, it, this is two years ago now, okay? He lived longer than the two months that the medical professionals had anticipated. Uh, obvious, being obvious. <laughs> we're not at the cemetery. We're not standing over a body. Uh, this, uh, this man right here has been, been touched by the Lord. And uh, I just want him to share anything that he would like. Will this microphone pick it up uh, yeah. back there? Are you getting a little bit? Yeah. We can probably hear him pretty good anyway. So. Well, my name is Jesse. Jesse again. I live out of Casa Grande. My significant Samantha, my daughter Alina, my three sister-in-laws, but uh, they're going to... We just absorbed they're going to be part of our family. Um, this right here is Emma, Elisa, and Dolores. So we're going to be one big happy family. That's one of the biggest blessings I've had. Amen. Amen. Um, like Rick said, uh, you know, I met <clears throat> Miss Rick to Miss Katie on a day of troubles. I, I, was, uh, I was in the Special Forces for many years. Did, what I thought was good for God and country. Come to figure out it was for dirty politicians. I was left behind and getting cut up, you know, back, back in Somalia, but nor here or there. I thought I would never be accepted. I was, I was scared of religion, I was scared of God. I was wrong thinking. Uh, well, years ago, I think it was like five years ago now, I came home, I was told that I had cancer and had a few months to live. You couldn't believe it because. When I wanted to die all those years, 13 and a half years, I didn't care about life, I didn't care about nobody else's life. That's what made me a good soldier, I guess. To them, in the eyes of, of, of Satan. And uh, I couldn't die. So they thought I was doing my job well, and I was highly decorated and all this and that. Well, I got out because I didn't think that's what I wanted, I wanted to raise a family. Well, I couldn't raise, it was the hardest thing for me to do. Um, I came home one day, and I was told that, you know, I had a, uh, Few months to live. At the same time, I had lost my wife at that time. I lost my wife due to her wrongdoings. She was an officer of the law, and she was in bed with four other gentlemen that are, that are men that were doing dirty deeds, but no here or there. So that was a wreck, and I was back in the, in the, in the abyss. I don't know how this happened. I'm out in, in, in the field out there, but and some trees. And Mr. H comes out. I call him, I call him Mr. H. I was losing my mind. I remember his name, so I called him Mr. H. Now everybody calls him Mr. H. So <laughs> it was a blessing that day. I met him and, and Miss Katie. He came in the end, he asked me, he asked me, uh, can I pray? You know, my God says, I need to pray for you. I know you get, or get cancer and that. And I looked at him like, who are you? CIA, the FBI? And I asked him, what are you working for? Are you working for Christina? Christina was my wife at the time. And he goes, no, you, do you want to lay my hands on you and pray? And I, I don't like people laying their hands on you. And I said, well, Sure, what else I got, you know? I'm in the abyss. And when he touched me, I felt just a warm feeling come about me. And uh, it has been blessings from there on. And, and I, I'm mad to say that even though I've been getting all these blessings, of the Lord gave me back my eyesight. Praise the Lord. And, and the doctors couldn't believe it. My, my cancer, one of the I had two different forms of cancer. My heart was lymphoma, it had gone. The VA couldn't believe it. And I went to three, four other institutions. They didn't believe it. I came down with leukemia, which I'm fighting now, but I'm beating it. I haven't gone into the treatments. I've been blessed just left to right with these beautiful princess girls over right here, Samantha and Lena, and, uh, and, and my brothers and sisters uh, of Christianity. My best friend there that we grew up together is down in Tennessee. Really? Oh. And, uh, God bless you. Glad to see you here.
You know, even though Satan Zeros keeps plunging at me, but I have all these, you know, great people in my life that, that keep it going. Mr. Mack over there, his significant. You know, he, that man didn't like me at first until he found out well, I was a diver, and then all of a sudden we're the best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my hat's off to all, all you folks, and I, I, I'd have to admit, like I said, I'm mad enough to admit that even with all these blessings, I still, I still question, I still, I'm still half stepping it. And is it because of the fear of, you know, is it really happening? But it is. God's great. And every day I get a blessing. Pinch it. So. Yeah, you're awake, buddy. This is life that God's given you. Amen. So I want to tell you, uh, thank you, Lord, for, for all the blessings and the graces I have. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Um, I'm Larry Lee. Uh, this is friend from Tennessee, Mississippi. I'm just driving through. No, I actually moved back here. I don't think any of God's thunder is just thunder for his testimony, but I got saved in the year 2000, and I'll say I love the Lord, and he brought me out of a lot of stuff too, Amen. but I've been praying for him ever since I got saved, and two years ago, our church was praying for him as well in Mississippi, and uh, all this stuff is, is, it's not fake. That's right. There is one God we serve, and he touches all of us, and he can do, we can pray in Mississippi and heal someone in California, Arizona, anywhere. Amen. And, and save, and it's just all for His glory and His grace. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I got to tell a little other part of the story. Uh, after uh, the Lord healed the cancer behind, was it your left eye or your right? Eye? My right eye. Your right eye, right? Uh, we would a lot of times we would pick Jesse up where he lives over in Cass Grand and bring him over to Florence for a Bible study because he couldn't drive at night with uh, problems with the right eye. And uh, one of our Bible studies there, <laughs> uh, Jesse was there, and I said, oh, uh, you know, sometimes one of his kids would bring him or something, and I said, well, who brought you tonight? And he says, oh, no, no, God healed my vision, too. I can drive at night. <laughs> <laughs> tell us when God does this. We get excited about it. And, and I, I do want to just tell you this, and we're going to sing some praise songs to the Lord because He is worthy of our worship and praise because every bit of what you have heard here has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with this church. It has to do with the Word of God and the power of God. We're just learning how to access those resources of God, and it's changing our lives. And so we rejoice. Now, hearing these testimonies is not going to make anybody here that doesn't believe God can do this, it's not going to make anybody believe. Faith doesn't come from hearing testimonies or having experiences. The Bible says faith comes from hearing the Word of God. And we're going to get into some of that in just a little bit if I don't get too carried away right now. So thank you all. Isn't God amazing? I thought it would really benefit us all. There are many more stories that could be told, but uh, thank you those of you who are willing to share. And, and uh, let's just rejoice in God and thank Him for being the great God who He is. Amen.